Bonjour, Kinemage and Nene Erlen and Dijnikas, and welcome to this production of the My Math Network. Today's episode, Chapter 3, Lesson 13, Problem Solving. Strategy, determine extra or missing information. The essential question in Chapter 3, what strategies can be used to divide whole numbers? We'll begin today in our handout, lesson 13, page 233. Make sure you have a pencil with you as you complete this assignment. There is, so we'll begin here. Step one, remember we're gonna go with understand, plan, solve, and check because you can't do a problem until you understand it. it says Kayla was collecting book orders. The cost of each book is $3. There were seven orders on Wednesday, five orders on Thursday, and more orders on Friday and Monday. How many book orders were collected altogether? Hopefully me reading that question has sent alarm bells off in your head. But let's talk about the facts we know. Let's get my annotation tool. I know the cost of a book is $3 and the number of book orders on Wednesday was seven. And Thursday was five. I need to find the total number of book orders. Seems easy enough, or is it? Let's go ahead and make sure this is written in. As with any of our My Math productions, if you need to pause the video in order to write things in, please feel free to do such. Let's go ahead and clear the drawings. Let's get to step two, plan. Let me get back to my annotation tool. Determine if there's extra or missing information. The blank of a book is not needed. Because we didn't, and that is the cost. So we had a little extra information there. Because if we're told, trying to count the number of books, does it really matter how much they cost? And the number of book orders that were collected on Friday and Monday is missing. That's gonna create a big problem as you write the word cost on that line. And I'm gonna go ahead and clear that as I move to the next slide on my part of the presentation here. Some information is blank. What word do you think I wanna use here? If you said missing, you're right, good job. Some information is missing, so I cannot solve the problem. If I knew how many orders were collected on Friday and Monday, I could, but it's asking me for information that is not available within the question. And I'll just discuss this. Is my answer reasonable? Yeah, I don't have all the numbers. Let's see what the book said. Since some information is missing, I can't solve the problem. And you can phrase it like that. Since some information is missing, I can't solve the problem. That can be an answer anytime you you need it. All right, let's go ahead and turn to practice the strategy. We'll do this one together as well. And then I will set you off to practice some on your own. Rocco is slicing a loaf of Italian bread for dinner. Sounds good to me. The bread costs $4. He cuts the loaf into slices that are one inch thick. The loaf is 18 inches long. How many pieces of bread did he cut? So what facts do I know? Let's get my annotation tool. The loaf is 18 inches long. Let's make this a little bigger so it fits. Slices are one inch thick. Let's 
What do I need to find out? How many pieces of bread he cut? All right, did you notice I didn't say anything about the cost of a loaf of bread? Because it frankly wasn't important. It will not help me solve the answer or solve the problem. It's extra information. So I'd make sure you this written down, even if that requires you to pause the video and write it down and then unpause the video. And welcome back. Let me go ahead and clear the drawings. I need to make a plan. What do you think the plan should be? Well, one, I have to determine if there's extra or missing information. And in fact, we know the cost of bread is extra information. Otherwise, do you have everything you need to solve the problem? Absolutely. I know how long the loaf is. I know how thick my slices are. I can now do the division. So I solve what's 18 divided by one? 18. So Rocco cut 18 pieces of bread. Go ahead and write that in. And yeah, obviously your answer is reasonable because we had the information necessary. to write it in. And now I want you to practice one. And we've decided that that was reasonable. Jaden is downloading songs onto his MP3 player. Boy, does that not date us. One song is five minutes long. Another is two minutes long. And a third is between the lengths of the other two songs. What is the total length of all three songs? Remember, you're going to determine if there's extra or missing information and then solve the problem as po if possible. If there is missing information and you cannot solve the problem, you might write, since there is missing information, comma, I can't solve the problem. If you can, go ahead and use the proper operations to write the answer down. You may pause the video. I'll see you once you have completed it. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. If you said there's missing information, you are correct. We don't know how long the third song is. I could do an estimate that it is somewhere between nine and 14 minutes, but that's really not exactly what it's saying. Let's go ahead and give you, let's skip down to number three. So as Carly is collecting money for a bolathon. Her goal is to collect $125. Last year, the Bolathon raised $100. If she charges $5 for each person, how many people need to participate in the Bolathon? Go ahead and determine if there is extra or missing information. We'll talk about the extra, or you can put a little line through it. And then if you can solve the problem, please do such. You may pause the video now. Welcome back, let's see how you did. There was extra information because um, we don't know, we don't need to know how much they raised last year. Awesome for the Bolathon raising $100, but it's extra info. We now know that 125 divided by five is 25. All right, you've done a great job. I appreciate it. Let's try one more problem. Let's go to the next page. Let's go to number six. Determine if there's extra or missing information, then solve the problem. And I have a chart here or a table. It says at the school bake sale, Kenji's mom bought three cookies, one brownie and one cupcake. She gave the cashier $2 and received $1.05 in change. Find the cost of a cupcake and write it in the table. You may pause the video and let's see what you come up with. Welcome back. We found that it was 30 cents, and here's how. 
Cookies cost 15 cents. So three times 15 is 45. And I'm going to build up. 105 plus 45 is $1.50. We now know that she brought a brownie, just one of them, which is 20 cents. So there's $1.70. $2 minus $1.70 is 30 cents. So that is our answer. At this point, I'd like you to again review page 237 on the My Homework. It reminds you of the steps. And then answer the five questions on page 238. You may do it on the worksheet form or the attached Google form. As always, I encourage you to join our live stream sessions. Schedules are available each day in the Google Classroom, and I'd be more than happy to engage with you there. We do have office hours at 2 p.m., or you can email me at mirland at psychchipschool.net with any questions you may have. Hope you all have a mental gizigad. Bama pee.